So, hello again, and this time we're going to talk about uh, violins in general. I have quite a few violins, as you might have noticed if you've been watching this channel. The reason why you might have been, but if you have, you have. And there's a reason for all of them to exist in my life, really. Having multiple guitars seems quite common. Lots of people have a Les Paul, a Telecaster, a Stratocaster, and others. Some people even have things like six Telecasters, that sort of thing. That seems quite common in the guitar world. It seems less common in the violin world. People often express surprise. I've got six electric violins and five acoustic violins. I know some professionals who have lots and lots of acoustic violins and use those for different reasons, for touring, for recording, for playing locally, that sort of thing. But I'm way off being a professional, obviously. So um, I'm going to explain today why I have six electric violins, how it came to be like this, and why I keep them, because they all make different sounds, they all have different uses for me. So this is the violin that started it all for me. This is a Bridge Lyra 5-string electric. It's a hollow-bodied violin, a nice sound. And I bought this in 2009. Almost on a whim, really. It seemed like a an interesting thing to do. I was sort of playing contemporary music on acoustic violin and sort of looking at electrics, thinking, oh, that sounds quite nice, and things you can do with pedals. So um, I did auditions of various different types, and this one seemed to sound the nicest to my ears. I think the hollow body gives it a much nicer sound than some of the more... Um, certainly the solid bodies at the time were, uh, were quite fizzy and not particularly pleasant. So this is the one I settled on. It's a beautiful marbled purple colour. Uh, it's made by Bridge Instruments in Lincolnshire in the UK and it's been with me on a lot of adventures. I've toured Europe with this violin, I've played the Islington Academy with it, played lots of gigs around Leeds and around the, and Liverpool and north of England generally, and yeah we've been through a lot together so we've just there's history with this and one of the reasons even though I don't use it a huge amount anymore and I'll explain why this is in a moment, it's got a lot of sentimental value to me at least. So nice violin, it's got um, geared pegs on the, uh, on the headstock, which aren't standard, but I had them retroactively fitted. Um, I recommend them heartily. It's not the only violin I've got them on, but I, but I do wish it was on more, because they're superb. They're just, yeah, they're just so much easier. If you don't know what they are, look them up. I'll put a link in the description so you know what they are. This is my Coda Bow Jewel. It's a rather nice bow. It's a good bow for five and six string violins, because it's got quite a high tension on it so it can drag the lower strings rather, rather well. So you get the low C string. So, yeah, this has appeared on most Helicopter Quartet albums, uh, several Scrappleback Phoenix albums, so Delan, it's appeared on um, all of the, uh, not all of the, all of the Cat Scans albums, most, all of the We Sell Seashells albums that I was on, I wasn't see the original violinist in that band. So, yeah, done a lot of work for me, this violin. I've still got a soft spot for it, really nice instrument. Um, still got the um, tuners at the end. I left those on when I had even when I had the geared pegs fitted, just because it sort of it keeps the weight balance a bit nicer. That's the main reason why they're still on there. So yeah, I've done a lot of recording sessions with this and uh, and live gigs and things. A few years after I got that violin, um, I bought this one, which is a Bridge Lyra octave violin. So it's tuned the same way, C G D A E but an octave lower than you would normally get on a violin. 
So it's effectively cello that goes under your chin with an E string. So as you can see, the coda bow works quite well with that, even with this, the thick strings. What I do often use it though, is an actual cello bow. I think you can hear even the difference there is quite reasonable. Even at the top end, it still sounds quite cello. -y. So yeah, again, it's got that lovely bridge, hollow sound, hollow body sound. And uh, with the extra sort of cello -y thing. So, this I've played this with Soda Lan on tour. Got normal pegs on there, so you have to tune it normally. Uh, it doesn't get as much use as the, um, as the main Lyra, obviously, because it's a quite a specialist thing. But I do use a lot of recording, so if you hear any cellos on my albums or albums I've contributed to, it's probably on this. Um, I've used it on Cripple Park Phoenix albums as well. So, the octave, one of the things octave is very good is low chugging. <laughs> quite fun. <laughs> so that's the uh, Bridge Lyra Octave Violin. Very nice instrument. So next up, this is my sort of main helicopter quartet violin. This is a Vector Prodigy Pro Violin. So let me focus on that please. Vector Prodigy Pro Violin is made in Canada by a wonderful man named Nicholas. I forget his last name, sorry. Um, He's now retired, so this is the last of these violins that it was either that he ever actually made. And it's got six strings rather than the more usual five. Five strings is very common on uh, electric violins because why not? But this has six. I wanted a six string violin partly because it was just less hassle than carrying both of those two around. It doesn't quite go down to the same depth as that, but it goes near enough. Uh, the bottom string's tuned to an F, but I've, I have tune it down to a D for some sometimes for helicopter quartet purposes which makes it quite rattly and quite fun it's um it's a sort of solid body violin with a Barbera pickup so it does sound quite a lot fizzier than the bridges because it's got a nine volt battery in there rather than a three volt battery that's one of the problems I had with the bridges is they are quite hissy at, at low volumes Whereas the uh, the nine volt ones tend not to be, the bridges are very good for what they do. Though. So this is uh, that's the bottom F string. So yeah, it's got a slightly softer sound than the uh, than even the bridges. I sometimes use this with the IRs, and I've done videos on impulse responses, a couple of videos on those, um, to make it sound a little bit more acoustic when I'm using helicopter quartet, so it makes it quite versatile. I'm using a GT1000 here for reverb effects and all the other effects. So this flexibility of this instrument is is really nice. It's got a quite a thick bridge, which some people don't like. It sort of gets in the way of speed. It's to slow the response time down a bit. I don't mind that because I tend to play sort of slow, mournful, sad music. 
The other downside of the sixth string is it's, if you're playing high up on the... Um, it's very hard. Anything above a bar... Up at about sixth position, you have to be quite careful where you put your fingers. They get, they get quite close to each other, the, str the strings... You can do it, and it does take practice, but um, it's it's not as easy as it might be, because there's just so many strings, and you can't rake them as much as you could, um, certainly with a four string. So it's something you do need to be more careful with, the six string. But it can make some awesome noises. That's really quite fun. So yeah, I've tuned the bottom string there moves around a lot. It's generally an F, which is there an F there. I've had it down to D as I say, and I've also played it with an E, which is quite good if you're playing with a guitarist. You do have to remember that it's not fifths all the way down if you can do that though. It's very easy to forget. <laughs> so careful about that. So next file on the early on the list, this one is the um Violarama Sycorax violin. Very, uh, very cool violin there. It's 3D printed, plastic carbon fibre, and it's got wooden bits on it as well. So the wood bit at the top there, the wood bit at the back. It's got, and it's also got a sound post, if you can see that. And a bass bar on it. And a whole assemblage of wood there. And that gives it a nice woody sound, so it sounds a lot more acoustic than um, your traditional electric violin. So this is built in County Durham, UK. Uh, by a guy I know reasonably well, just chatted a few times. He's actually the guy who fitted the canaling geared pegs onto my first bridge. So I got this a similar time that I got the um, the Vector, a little before I think. I was just looking around for different things. So this has a lot more wood and acoustic sound to it. quite a lot on my um, solo albums because it's just easier than getting an acoustic violin out with a microphone and micing it all up and next door neighbours listening into what I'm doing and picking up their kids making noises. <laughs> just plug this in and DI it and a bit of EQ as you can hear it's slightly honky in places but quite a lot of acoustics are too so so yeah it's it's fun. I um, I did a full review of this violin though in uh, up there. So if, up there. Oh, I never get this right. <laughs> and up there. I did a full review of this violin up there somewhere. So you can have you can watch that if you want to know all the uh, upsides and downsides on it. So it's it's a lovely light violin. It's got a normal bridge on it as you can see there. It weighs almost nothing. It weighs almost hardly anything more than an acoustic. It's quite it's quite lovely for that. For those that bother about these things. Uh, Tom also does a version with um, without the preamp built in. It's got a 9 volt preamp in it, but you can buy one that'll work off phantom power if that's what you prefer. The um, the Finkbolt carbon fiber. It's got the canilling geared pegs on it. Yeah, it's good. A lot more bite at the top end than any other electric I've ever played, and I, I, I really like that. Once you get above third position, it's it's yeah, it's, it's a good screamy violin, yeah, superb. So next violin, <laughs> this is the uh, this is a Cantini Earphonic violin. It is not a MIDI violin, as I 
once said, if there's a video about there telling you why this is definitely not a MIDI violin. Uh, not using it with the, um, the GK output here, just plug it into the standard jack, into the GT1000. Uh, uh, got this recently mainly because it plugs into the, uh, the GR55 SY1000 for doing weird synth effects. Uh, again, full review of this up there. And because this has got a magnetic pickup, again, it's actually quite a useful instrument because it sounds very different. <laughs> That's quite a usable sound. It's less sort of fizzy than uh, than um, a pizza, with it being a mag pickup, um, but not quite as um, screechy as the sicker axe. Um, yeah, it's a nice compromise sound, I think, and yeah, it's a nice instrument. So the last file that I'm going to show you is a bit of an oddity. It's this. I call this the cyborg violin. <laughs> It is a bridge Aquila four string electric violin, my only four string electric in fact. I got it cheap, uh, same one was giving it away, well not giving it away, but selling it moderately cheaply. So I bought it and decided to use it as a test bed for various strange things. So underneath the bridge there I've got an inertial measurement unit that basically tells you where the violin is in space. So it'll, do, it'll monitor whether you do that or that or that or that and all these sorts of things, it knows that. It's got um, LED lights on there, which I don't know they're working. Yep, and there's LED lights there. You can see there's, which I can control with these buttons on the side. There's a um, little um, resistance thing on the side there, I forget what they're called, uh, for measuring me wiping my fun lots of there. And all of those get measured uh, by Raspberry Pi down there, which does some hard maths, which I did not write. I got them from the, off the internet. And that converts them into MIDI CCs and sends them to the GT1000 so that they can control different effects. So if I have a, a delay. However, I lean there. Changes the feedback on the delay. And put it down down there. Brings up the overtones. Which is quite nice. fun to play with. Uh, this thing, if you've got um, a MIDI connected to the Raspberry Pi, which I haven't at the moment, it will that will spin round in time with, uh, with whatever you're playing, whatever the book clock rate is. Because the Pi is not connected to the audio output, it doesn't respond to the audio. Now I've got the Pi sound that might actually be feasible, but I haven't got round to it yet. So this is quite an old bridge violin. As a result, I think the pickup is not quite as nice sounding as on the newer bridges that I have, even the, <laughs> the newer ones from 2009. This is quite an old instrument, so uh, even with the effects taken off you can hear it's not quite as lovely a sound. So used to playing for five and six string instruments, I'm not quite used to the, the string pitch on this thing either. Hence the mistakes. So there's a little button on the side which is on. Uh, there's a little lithium battery there that charges up. That's the charging port. <laughs> it's all cobbled together as you can see. I mean, there's a bit of hot glue on the back and tape and blue tack. It's very much a DIY horrible thing, but it's been fun to play with. I haven't actually done any real use of it. I did I just I did a gig once with it and there's I think there's a thing on one of my early YouTubes with it. 
but I haven't got as much use out of it as I thought I might. I just want more of a fun making it as much as anything else. So yeah, that's the cyborg violin. The um, the wife the stuff is transmitted from the IMU. It comes over Wi-Fi, so hence there's only the normal lead, normal signal lead. It sounds a lot of data. It's quite a good way of cr crashing. So I did try one sending it to a synthesizer. I think it was the Blofeld, and it sent so much MIDI that it just crashed the Blofeld. So yeah, be careful. <laughs> it yeah. sends a lot of data. Every time you move it, it sends a couple of hundred. In fact, it's sending about a hundred or so things every second maybe even more you can make it send up to 400 a second i think it's a lot and that's that's for everything so yeah it's fun so those are the violins i have and they've all got slightly different uses they're all different to play with um yeah i hope that's been interesting been interesting fun to make and uh, yeah see you in the next video bye